Hello, thank you for joining me once again on Obesip Academy. On today's tutorial, I shall be looking at linear linear regression analysis using eViews. Okay, now let's assume we have this particular questionnaire here that has been distributed to various respondents. Here we have innovativeness, INV, risk taking, RT, SMEs, growth, SG. And these are the questions. Question asks according to each of the codes assigned here. For innovativeness, we have five questions for RT which is rated will have five questions for S SMEs group to also have five questions as you can see here and they're all rated in Likert scale format captured here and look at the Likert scale agreement scale here one for strongly disagree up to five which is strongly agree okay this is the model we want to actually estimate all right here we have our dependent variable SMEs group and the two independent variables here are INV which is innovativeness and risk taking if our data set here is normally distributed, we are going to apply linear regression and PSC correlation. However, if we found that it's not normally distributed, we shall apply ordinary regression and Spearman rank correlation. Okay, let's assume that this questionnaire has been distributed and this data set we are generated, as you can see here. So this INV1 down to 5 here is the one we have here. Okay, now I've actually carried out this same analysis using SPSS. Okay, you may want to watch that particular video amongst the previous videos I have for you to see how I analyze using SPSS and it will be of great help to you also. Okay, so I've already captured the mean values of the INV here, as you can see here, so there will be no point trying to, okay, trying to estimate it all over again, so I don't waste your time. Clicking this button here, you can see I've already captured the average values of this, which is 2.4, C3, D3, E3, F3, g3 adding all this together divided by five gives all these mean values here as we captured as captured down here for rt the same way keeping my cursor here as you can see here i've already added all this value divided by five to get this down to this place and for sme's growth the same so i don't really waste your time doing that you can watch my video on spss on how i actually found the averages but of course keeping my cursor here i'll be able to see how i got them as you can see here Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is that I'm going to move this data set into eViews and show you how to carry out analysis using it. So I'm going to launch my eViews now. Okay, launching my eViews here. Click on create a new eViews work file. Okay, then on that work file structure type here, click this drop down button and select unstructured slash undated. Under observation is going to ask you how many respondents we are given this particular questionnaire here. So as you can see here, we have 20 respondents. So under this particular observation here, I'm going to type in 20, then simply click OK. All right. Now the next thing you need to do here is to copy this data set. Okay. And move it into eViews. Okay. As you can see. Okay, this is innovativeness. The next is risk taking. Then lastly, I'll copy SME's growth. Alright, so we have our data set here inside um, eViews. You can as well click each of these to be sure that you have the data set captured correctly. Okay. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is to run a normality test on this data set here so that I'll be sure or ascertain that they are normally distributed before I can use linear regression on them. Okay, for me to do that, I'll simply highlight the, the three variables and open them as group. Okay, then you click view, then select the skill statistics. If your data set is complete, you select common sample, but if you have any missing value among the data set, you select individual sample. So since I don't have any missing values, I'll simply select common sample. All right, we have our result here. Now, we are much interested in the Jacobera test for normality and its probability value. You can as well interpret these other parameters if you are interested in it. But for the purpose of this video, we are actually interested in the Jacobera and its probability value. Now, the null hypothesis for normality test is that the data sets are normally distributed. Whereas the alternative hypothesis that the data sets are not normally distributed. So as you can see, the probability values here for SG is 0 0.62, for INV is 0 0.603, and for RT is 0 
and they are all found to be greater than 0 0.05 that's if you're using five percent level of significance which goes on to show that our data sets here are normally distributed as you can see meaning we are accepting the null hypothesis which shows that data sets are normally distributed as you can see here okay all right now there's another way of actually ascertaining if your data set is normally distributed but in this case you have to check them one by one so for us to be able to do that i'll double click the first variable here then click view then select the c statistics this time around i'll select histogram and stats as you can see here you discover that it's the same value i obtained when i joined all the variables together look at the probability value here is 0 0.603 and look at the chakubella value here which shows that innovativeness is normally distributed as you can see let's try for risk taking also we click view then select histogram stats also as you can see here it's normally distributed also because the probability value here is greater than 0 0.05 looking at this probability value here so our rt here is normally distributed also then lastly for sme's growth we we'll have 0 0.62 which is exact figure we we'll have earlier on where we combined all the data sets to check for normality so which also goes on to show that our data set here are normally distributed also okay now having ascertained that our, our data set here are normally distributed the next thing we need to do is to conduct a um, piercing correlation on it or piercing correlation matrix so for us to do that you open all the variables again as group okay then click view then select covariance analysis then uncheck covariance then check correlation and check probability so that i'll be able to see if they are statistically significant as if the correlation are statistically significant then simply click ok now looking at the covariance result here the correlation between sg and itself is one that's why i have one here then looking at the correlation between sg and innovativeness the value here is 0 0.54103 013 which shows that there is a positive and strong correlation between sme's growth and innovativeness and it is also found to be statistically significant at five percent look at the probability value here which is less than 0 0.05 however if you look at the correlation between sg and rt is negative and weak because this is less than 0 0.05 i mean this is less than 0 0.5 rather okay which shows that it is weak negative there is a weak and negative correlation between sg and rt and this correlation is also found not to be statistically significant as you can see it is greater than 0 0.05 so between the two independent variables and the dependent variable only innovativeness was found to be statistically significant strong and positive then look at the correlation between the two independent variables among themselves here it is weak which shows there is no evidence of multicoronality and it's also not statistically significant all right so this is how to perform the correlation so having done these two the next thing we need to do is to run the regression analysis proper and i will show you the interpretation so for us to run the linear regression simply click quick select estimate equation then under this box here you type in the dependent variable first which is sme's growth space c which is a constant or intercept space inv which is the first independent variable then rt which is the second independent variable so the method we're using is least square you leave it as default least square simply click ok now I click ok we'll have our results here we have the variable coefficient standard error t statistic and probability value i've actually prepared a powerpoint for its interpretation so i'll be cross-referencing this result with the powerpoint result the powerpoint i've prepared already so i'll move straight to the powerpoint yes on the powerpoint we'll have the components of regression output we have the regression coefficient the coefficient shows the sign and size or magnitude of change they are computed by the standard ols formula so the regression coefficient going back to the results are all these these are regression coefficients then we have the standard errors the standard error column report the estimated standard errors of the coefficient estimate the standard errors measures the statistical reliability of the coefficient okay look at the standard error here the next we have the t-statistics the t-statistic which is computed as the ratio of an estimated coefficient to its standard error 
is employed to test the statistical significance of individual regression coefficient. To interpret the t-statistic, we should examine the probability value or p-value captured as prob. Okay, look at the t-statistic and look at the associated probability value here, captured, all right, which is prob. The probability value or marginal significance level is defined as the lowest significance level at which a null hypothesis can be rejected. Given a p-value, you can tell at a glance if you are to reject or accept the null hypothesis. Okay? Now, at 5% or 0.05 level of significance, if the probability value of the t-statistic is greater than 0.05, accept the null hypothesis. And if the probability value of the t-statistic is less than 0.05, reject the null hypothesis. Now, interpreting the results proper, the INV coefficient value, which was found to be 0.231, okay, let's check. Look at the coefficient value here, plus 0.231, as you can see here. Shows that there is a positive association between INV and SG, which is SME's growth. It implies that a one-unit increase in INV, on average, increased SME's growth by 0.231 units. The RT coefficient value, which was found to be minus 0.119, okay, let's check, minus 0.1186, so approximating, we'll have 0.119, as you can see here, shows that there is a negative association between RT and SG. It implies that a one unit increase in RT on average decreased SG, which is SME's growth, by 0.119 units. They're coming down to the t statistics and probability value. The calculated t value for relationship between INV and SG is given as 2.937 with an associated p value of 0.009. Okay, we can as well check that 2.937 and 0.009, as you can see here. All right. Great. So, since the p value is less than 0.05, which is this p value, at the 5% level of significance, we conclude that INV has a significant impact on SG. The calculated t-value for relationship between RT, which is risk taking and SME's growth SG, was found to be minus 1.149, okay, minus 1.149, as you can see here, with an associated p-value of 0 0.266, 266, 0 0.266. Since the p-value is greater than 0.05 at the 5% level of significance, we conclude that RT has an insignificant impact on SG. Moving forward, we'll look at the r squared. The coefficient of determination on r squared is used to measure the goodness of fit or explanatory power of a model. Technically, the r squared gives the proportion or percentage of the total variation in the dependent variable that is explained by the independent variable or variables. The R square value of 0 0.344, let's check, 0 0.3437, so approximately we have 0 0.344 here, as you can see here, shows that about 34.4% changes in SG is explained by INV and RT, while a greater part of 65.6% is captured by the error term. It shows that the model has a poor fit. So when you subtract 100 from this, you have 65.6, which is captured by error time, which shows that this model has a poor fit. Then look at the adjusted error squared. This is a modified version of the error square that has been adjusted for a number of independent variables in the model. The adjusted error square penalizes the error square for the addition of variables which do not contribute to the explanatory power of the model. The adjusted error square value of 0 0.267 Okay, let's look at it. 0 0.2665, so approximately we have 0 0.267. Shows that about 26.7% changes in SG is explained by INV and RT collectively, while a greater part of 73.7% .7 is captured by the error term. It also shows that the model has a poor fit. The next is the F statistic. The F statistic measures the overall significance of the model. It consists of calculations that provide information about levels of variability within a regression model 
and form a basis for test of significance. The result confirms that the overall, the overall regression model is significant for the data and this was captured by the f-statistic value of 4.452 okay let's look at the f-statistic here 4.4518 so approximately we have 4.452 and this associated probability value of 0 0.028 okay, let's cross-reference it so we have 0 0.0278 so approximately we have 0 0.028 as you can see here okay where are we that was found to be significant at 5%. So the overall significance of this model is significant or the overall performance of this model is significant going by the F statistic. The next is the Watson statistic. The Watson statistic measures the evidence of autocorrelation in the residuals. The acceptance, acceptable W Watson range of no autocorrelation is between 1.45 and 2.44. Thus, the fitted regression line showed that there is no evidence of photocorrelation as indicated by the Boasin value of 1.777. As you can see here, look at the Boasin value here, 1.777. Okay, so this pretty much concludes the interpretation of this particular regression. Now, there are something else you also might want to conduct, which is a post estimation test or diagnosis test from this result. You can actually do that from this particular result captured here. Now, first on the list is perhaps you want to conduct the VIF multicollinearity test. For you to be able to do that from this result, what you need to do is to click view, okay, then select coefficient diagnostics, scroll down to variance inflation factors. Now looking at the centered VIF, as you can see, they are all less than 10, which shows that this model or the variables used in this model are not collinearity, that there's no collinearity among the variables. Okay, there's no multicollinearity among the independent variables, going by the uh, centered VIF value here which are all less than 10, as you can see. So there's no evidence of multicollinearity amongst the independent variable, also confirming what we captured with the correlation matrix. Now, the next thing we want, we want to conduct is the maybe um, serial correlation test. We simply go down to, or let us start with normality test, Stephen. Okay, let's start with the normality test for the residual. Okay, looking at the Jacobera statistics again, series residuals, Jacobera, the probability value here is 0 0.624, which also shows that our model is free from, uh, I mean, our model is normally distributed. That means the error term for this particular model is normally distributed, as you can see. So the model here is normally distributed. That is, the error term here is normally distributed. That's for the regression model we estimated. Okay, let us perform serial correlation test. Serial correlation LM test. Okay, look at the probability value of the F statistics and observed R squared. They are all greater than 0 0.05, which shows that the model is free from serial correlation, as you can see here. So they are all greater than 0 0.05. Let's conduct heterostatistic test. Click view. Okay. Click OK. Look at the probability values here also, which shows that the model, there is no evidence of heterostatistic in the model because the probability value here are also greater than. 0.05 okay you may want to conduct a um, linearity test by simply coming down to residual stability diagnostics then select Ramsey reset test okay for us to check the mathematical description of the model as you can see here the values here are greater than 0.05 which will show that the model is well specified linearly specified as you can see here they are all greater than 0.05 then you may want to conduct Cousin stability test also Simply scrolling down to recursive estimate, Cousin test. Now, looking at the Cousin result here, from this particular edge, I discovered that there is some evidence of instability in the model. Okay, around this area, the model is not actually stable because this blue line crosses the two critical red, one of the critical red boundaries. So, this model going by Cousin test is not stable. Now, let's look, let us look at Cousin square to ascertain properly. Recursive estimates, then could sum sum of um, squares. Fine. All right. Going by the Cousin sum of squares, the model is stable, as you can see, because it didn't cross the two critical boundaries here. So our model is stable going by the uh, Cousin sum of squares. All right. So this pretty explains and defines how you can be able to estimate uh, Likert 
skill and uh, data regression using eViews. Okay, you may want to watch that of the SPSS and see how I also use the same data set to carry out the analysis. All right, if this is the first time of coming to our channel to watch our video, okay, kindly subscribe so that you can be able to get more updates and kindly share this video with whoever that might want it for their regression analysis or for academic or research purpose. Thank you for watching and listening.